Right, so today we're going to look at a new frame for the DJI system, which I've kind of fallen in love with a little bit. And this is the GEP Mark IV HD5, so this is basically the DJI amended version of the Mark IV, which I liked a lot. I liked it so much that because I'm a bit sort of obsessive and when I find something new that I like, I kind of like to try it out as much as I can. And because the DJI system is at the top of my agenda at the moment, I'm trying to sort of find um, the perfect frame for it. And to be honest, I don't think I have yet. Um, the Impulse RC Apex is a very nice frame, but I feel it's better built with KISS and the Impulse RC OSD etc than it is with DJI. Um, I don't like the antenna system with it and I wish there was more room for the antennas at the back of the quad because you end up with um, the coax of the antennas sort of cramped around everywhere um, and there, there isn't really any space for your receiver or anything like that so it's a little bit of an afterthought. The Catalyst Machine Works Bangard is a much nicer frame to build and use with the DJI system but of course that's very heavy um, so it's not what I would ideally want to be running with a Hero 7 um, and because I can use KISS now I, what I'm looking to do is get the same sort of flight performance that I get on my KISS quads namely uh, the Petit Soldat SX218 which is a pretty light setup. I'm looking for a frame that I can sort of do um, a similar thing with um, the DJI system. So anyway, because I like the GEP Mark IV so much for the money, I got myself um, the HD version from Unmantec. And the frame itself is pretty much identical to the normal frame with a few tweaks. And I'm guessing, although I haven't built it yet, that those tweaks are around the camera plates because on the Mark IV, the DJI unit um, didn't really sort of fit on the camera plates particularly well. And it also comes with a cradle for the DJI unit and you get a few 3D printed bits. Um, in this case, um, an antenna mount for the two antennas and looks like a TPU piece possibly for running um, Crossfire Immortal T or the Free Sky version. And as usual with GEP, you get a lot of battery straps, really good quality battery straps actually, the GEP ones, far better than more expensive frames like the Catalyst, etc., where the battery straps tend to be a bit crap. These ones are actually really good. It's a shame they come in this disgusting colour. And you also get a battery strap for um, a HD camera if you want to use one as well, although there's no mount for that with this kit. So as always, I'm going to stick this guy together and then let's have a look and see how well the DJI unit actually fits in it. So there it is with the top plate removed. And you'll notice it comes with four of these rubber gummies. And you'll also notice that one of mine is black because one immediately rolled underneath my workbench and I haven't bothered to, uh, to go and find it. Um, but it's very much business as normal as per the other Gap Mark RC I flew. So again, as I said, we've got these brace plates and this is likely to be the bit that breaks. You also get an additional four standoffs, which are the longer ones. So if you wanted to, you could put the arms on the underside if you preferred. But the interesting bit of course is this DJI cradle, which I've got to say has been done really, really well. Um, the print itself is pretty crude, but it sort of gets the job done and it's been really well thought out the way it sort of sits firmly um, against the TPU here and against the plate here. Um, antenna mounts again, stuck out nicely away from the main body of the quad for best reception and again they feel pretty sturdy um, so I'm really chuffed with that. The interesting thing is if you wanted to because this sort of quad is very symmetrical you could run it mid mount like the iFlight Titan and although that doesn't give you a huge amount of space at the bottom there's certainly enough space to get 
a slim ESC like you know the airbot furling that sort of stuff underneath and then of course because at the back you've got 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 mount holes there's nothing to stop you sticking a flight controller at the back so you've got options and the actual cradle itself fits really nicely with the air unit if I just put it in so basically the air unit just sits inside its cradle like so and as you can see every part of it is relatively protected from sort of top or bottom impacts and it just sits over these standoffs <clears throat> and as you can see once it's in it's not really going to go anywhere and you get this nice free space underneath which you could use to mount your receiver etc and it also sits the DJI unit farther away from the antenna mounts than most of the other quads which tend to sort of bunch it up right against the uh, antenna mount which makes it really difficult you end up with your antennas squashed everywhere whereas on this one um, there's a little bit more space the bit I don't like and this was the same when I converted my Mark IV to carry the DJI unit is the camera plates which if I just set this camera in so the camera plates kind of sit like so and you'll immediately notice there isn't a huge amount of play on the cable and I wish DJI actually would lengthen this cable it really bugs me that they have given us the minimum amount of space just gives us the option to have a cable a couple of inches longer um, for bigger and longer quads and this guy one of the reasons why I always liked it is you had a sort of acre of battery space um, which meant that you can run any size battery that you want but that is the bit I don't like about it um, although it's not tight there's enough tension there that I would be a little bit scared about over time putting pressure on um, on the cable connectors either side so what I'll probably do with mine is just very slightly file a couple of mil just to sit it very slightly back or if push comes to shove I can always just get some 3D printed camera mounts um, but as for everything else pretty much par for the course um, and everything that I liked about the original Mark IV is here as well um, and this guy I bought myself um, so despite the break I had on the Mark IV I still went out and got another one and the reason for that is in the air it's a really sort of lithe quad because it's got narrow arms and this narrow top plate it really feels light and slice slices through the air and I think in terms of the way it's packaged up with the DJI unit at the back and a very long body when you put a GoPro mount on the front you've got a relatively well balanced quad because obviously the DJI unit weighs sort of 40 grams or so 45 grams you stick a Session or a Hero 7 up front and your quad um, should be in a relatively nice place obviously it's still going to be front heavy but I kind of like that after sticking heavy action cams on the, the, the front of my quad everything else is pretty much the same 2mm top plate 2mm bottom plate 5mm arms and as always the gap carbon is cut absolutely perfectly um, it's chamfered which should help with delamination you want to catch it and rip off the top uh, the top layer it isn't the best carbon fiber in the world it has got a little bit of flex in it which i think is always a good thing but as i said when i had a head-on collision with mine against a tree the only thing that broke was this uh, was this little flat plate here so it should be for its weight and uh, slenderness a relatively sturdy little quad obviously you're not going to take this guy you know flying at a bando or anything like that uh, you want a much sort of beefier quad for that for that but for sort of slicing through trees and <clears throat> doing sort of freestyle um, in sort of more natural environments it's pretty perfect for me um, you know I wish they'd beefed up this arm connection here I wish they'd changed the camera plate design 
and set it further back so there was a little bit more room when you were building your stack a little bit more play in it like so but we're talking about a 40 quid frame here with you know 3d prints and you also get um you know additional screws the usual spaces and what have you you get a couple of battery strapped of battery um, pads and of course you get the three lipo straps that i've said and i use these on quite a few of my quads despite hating the color simply because they don't break so yeah i think it's a really good quad not for everybody not a quad to smash around but if you're a relatively you know relaxed smooth freestyle pilot i think it's a really good um, really good option right so there it is all built up and everything's looking familiar compared to its normal freestyle brother so its brother without all the dji gubbins was 105 grams and this guy comes in at 124 grams so they've added a fair bit of fair bit of weight to it having said that it's still relatively light for a freestyle frame given that it's carrying um, the additional 3d printed mounts and on face value it looks like they haven't really changed too much but when you get the normal mark 4 you will see there have been quite a lot of changes so you'll see that the the top plate is slightly longer on the mark 4 we don't have these flared side arches here and everything's just been sort of shuffled around marginally and again if we take the normal mark 4 and stick it underneath and put the gap hd in its place you'll see that the arms are slightly wider um, but they're more of a squashed x um, so they push the arms backwards to give us less props in view so they have changed quite a bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to build mine and if i get round to it i might film my progress along the way if anybody's curious but that is it for now cheers guys thank you bye bye